I'm Mike Elliott, and you're watching CEO Live TV. We're back again with Vuzix, a leader in the augmented and virtual reality market, which trades on the NASDAQ under ticker VUZI. Good morning, Paul. Great to have you back. Yeah, hey, Mike. It's good to be here. Thanks. So apparently you won an award or two at the recent Mobile Congress. Can you share uh, some more details on that? Yeah, actually, Mike, at Mobile World Congress and at the Consumer Electronics Show, you know, we make these wearable augmented reality smart glasses devices. And one of the things about Vuzix's products is you can put them on and they're lightweight and wearable all day. Well, at CES and at Mobile World Congress, we unveiled our Blade 3000 smart glasses. And these guys are using our next generation waveguide optics. And literally, they look like a pair of Oakley style sunglasses. We're the first company to make a pair of smart glasses that when you put them on, you don't look like you just stepped off the Starship Enterprise. And and these guys are that. They've got the processors, batteries, everything built into them. So there's this really lightweight platform, 2.8 ounces, and they're devices that people would wear even walking down the street. So it was a big game changer compared to most of our competitors that are making devices that weigh, in some cases, in the pounds. So big step forward for wearable augmented reality glasses. And I think you just covered this next question, which was to say, you know, tell us a bit more about the wearability of the Vuzix smart glasses, especially these Blade 3000s versus competitors. But I think you just addressed that. Anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, I can continue on the in the enterprise market. If you think about it, right, you have an employee who's wearing something that he has to use all day long. If if an hour later, if an hour after putting them on, it hurts and they're overheating and they're uncomfortable, you've already lost the battle there. Vuzix, since the back in the, our defense days, have been making products that are more lightweight and our smart glasses in particular are designed for all day use. And Paul, we understand the M300 is on back order already and you're shipping as fast as you can. Is that right? Uh, and how is the current demand and, and can you meet demand in the future? Should it pick up materially? Yeah, so the the process that we've been going through here with the M300, we started primarily with what we call our VIP. These are special partners that work with Vuzix. They've got they've got business opportunities that are in hand. They've been using our M100 and they've been seeing success there, but they've really needed the upgraded feature set of the M300. And over the summer and through the fall of last year, those are the folks that we've been working mostly with and now that they've got m300s our production line is moving moving ahead faster and faster all of them are saying please ship me everything you can go as fast as you can and we're going through that process where we're building more and more every day and we're shipping more and more every day and we have not yet opened it up to the more mass market side of the business on the enterprise side we have a bunch of what we call migration packages that are on the shelf ready to ship customers that are waiting to get their hands on those and those are also starting to go out the door so right now we are back ordered we're going as fast as we can to keep catch up to that by the end of the quarter we'll be at a a thousand to fifteen hundred unit run rate on a monthly basis so we, you know we're getting there i would also suggest that our m100 um you know our, our original thoughts there is it would be a product that would probably be going away there's a lot of customers that we have well a fair number of them that have got design wins with the M100. So the M100 actually has been picking up in business too. And can you provide any additional commentary on the new joint venture with Toshiba? Uh, Toshiba powered by Vuzix, as you say. Was there a a reason you think Toshiba chose Vuzix over other options? Yeah. You know, we've we've been telling our shareholders that as this business unfolds, major OEMs and partners most likely would be coming to Vuzix because of our advanced technology and the state that it's in and how it can get people a head start. And Toshiba is a prime example of that. They're one of the largest um, electronic suppliers, computer equipment suppliers on the planet today. They've even tried building their own smart glasses in the past. And after doing a review of what's in the marketplace, they came to Vuzix and we're making for them a custom pair of smart glasses. Um, I can't really get into a whole lot of details around the system. I can say it's very unique and it's advanced. And Vuzix not only is doing the development work on the glasses themselves, they're going to be Toshiba powered by Vuzix. So our brand is going to be known to the world. And we are doing the volume production for them on the smart glasses piece of this solution. And that will happen by the fall of this year. At least it's anticipated to be by the fall of this year. 
And is the Blade 3000 late uh, 2017 launch still on track for your next generation smart sunglasses? And since you've referred to these as similar to a pair of Oakley sunglasses, would you say they're more focused on consumers or are there some enterprise applications for them also? Yeah, the Blade 3000, it, it is cool looking for sure. Um, and so you could imagine consumers wanting to be able to use the Blades for anything from um, how far is it distance to the hole, if you're playing golf, to directional information walking down the street. I mean, when you put these things on, you won't have to take your phone out of your pocket. So this is the beginnings of a shift from, you know, not using your phone anymore in favor of maybe just a, a puck that sits in your pocket that has wireless connectivity and everything else is done through the glasses. Um, that said, we have a lot of customers and the enterprise side that are B2C. Uh, you might imagine uh, you're in a facility where you're looking for price checks and you want to make sure that you've packed out the shelves correctly. And these glasses are great for that. And they have a look and feel that's more akin to that sort of a, of a market. That said, you know, we are we are definitely going to be in the enterprise side to begin with with these glasses. But this is the beginnings of moving into the consumer space. Well, so last question, what do you think the biggest growth area is for augmented reality going forward in terms of enterprise usage? There's a bunch of vertical markets and and I, and I have to say a, a lot of people sort of miss the mark on what they visualize augmented reality being here for companies today. Many companies don't need this concept of, uh, you know, pasted electronic data on top of the real world. There's some really simple things that you can do that are incredibly powerful. An example is field service applications. You have a guy in the field, he's wearing the glasses, he's looking at something and there's a technician who really understands the problem sitting back in an office that's air conditioned, helping him because he can visually see what that technician in the field is seeing. That's called telepresence or see what I see and literally for every dollar some firms have spent within three months, they put $20 in their pocket back. This is not this complex AR stuff here. It is simply a truly lightweight wearable computing device that allows people to teleport into the world. So the markets that we see for the product, I mean, if you think about that in air conditioning alone, it's massive across the United States alone. Um, in heat, in big equipment that's in the field, Telepresence, the idea of taking a smart employee and allowing him to be in the field without being in the field is just a massive market opportunity. Another good one is in the logistics marketplace. We work with companies like DHL and many of the larger logistics and, and shipping companies. And when you put these glasses on, it becomes an amazing hands-free barcode scanner. Even just confirming what is in the box is a big deal. So the returns are also very big in shipping. Shipping is... <laughs> It's what drives the world today, if you think about it. So there's verticals that if you have a lightweight, truly wearable, hands-free computing system in the mobile space, that are going to be very, very big for these glasses. And Paul, uh, anything we missed or anything else investors should know right now before we close? Yeah, I think it's important to make the point that 2017 is a pivotal year for augmented reality and smart glasses in the enterprise markets. I mean, it hasn't been here just yet. There's been all these predictions that it's coming. But the devices, I mean, if you look at the competitors that are out there, they're big and bulky. It's only now with the release of our M300 that we have customers around the world that are going from pilots now to rolling out productive solutions. And again, with ROIs as, as much as 20 to 1 in just a few months, it makes it makes good sense. And Vuzix has built this ecosystem with partners, including major OEMs like our friends at Toshiba, value-added resellers, system integrators. And we are the leading companies that are facilitating that change. 2017 is going to be an exciting year and a start of a major shift in this space. Enterprise is going to be a big deal. And with the release of Vuzix's waveguides and glasses that literally look like a pair of Oakley sunglasses, you're going to start to see the roll into this being truly the mass market opportunity. $120 billion plus augmented reality market that is finally starting to unfold. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, um, you know, we've been following this story for some time as, as well as the augmented reality space. And it really seems to have taken off this year. So, Paul, again, thanks for your time. Uh, we hope to catch up with you again soon. Yeah, thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Thanks. We've been talking to Paul Travers. He's president and CEO of Vuzix. 
Buzix is a leading supplier of video eyewear and smart glasses products in the consumer enterprise and entertainment markets. They're a publicly traded company listed on the NASDAQ under ticker VUZI, and you can learn more about them by visiting the company's website at www.vuzix.com. Thanks for watching CEO Live TV.